Hi, everybody, and glad to have you with us on this Friday, also the third day of June, also a pretty nice day in the neighborhood that followed a little more than an inch of rainfall, and for a whole lot of fans traveling home from Shelby Valley last night, it was torrential rainfall for much of the trip. About one and one-tenth of an inch here at the studio, and some folks saw even more than that. If you've got any outside weekend plans or live in some low-lying areas prone to well, you want to keep an eye on tonight's forecast and that over the course of your weekend. So we've got another frontal system coming in that's going to give us some repeated chances of several heavy rounds of showers like we saw last night. Definitely into your Saturday and into your Sunday as well. We'll outline an updated weather forecast in much more detail in just a few moments. We will go to Shelby Valley for last night's championship matchup between two storied teams which have their hi history all their own. And, in fact, you can talk about that history for shows on end. But last night, the Lady Hornets and the Lady Golden Eagles met up once again, this time in the championship round after the championship district round in McGoffin County. They were at Shelby Valley last night. We'll take you there in just a few moments. And we'll have some highlights for you. We'll also have a few big events that are set to take place this weekend. Uh, one that does have a backup plan weather-wise. One that has been canceled, but uh, kind of a, well, I'll just tell you more about that in a few seconds. Then we'll have a whole lot of other headlines to follow. We'll go ahead and pick it up right now with McGoffin County and Johnson Central, the ladies from both ball clubs. In the championship round last night at Shelby Valley, where I picked up the game after a 2-0 burst in the first inning from McGoffin County to take an early lead. I arrived there shortly after the beginning of the fourth inning to find that the Johnson Central Lady Eagles would make a comeback. In the top of the six, as she's known to do and did in the district championship, Bailey Daniels smacks one high and over center field as Central takes a bite out of the lead. McGoffa County held them to that one run, and Central would then shut the Lady Hornets out in the bottom of the sixth. In what was scheduled to be the last inning with two outs in their last at bat, Hobson's waiting at third, and Elania Castle on an 0-1 pitch grounds one up the middle to Jazzy Howard, and McGoffa County thinks it's over on a safe call that keeps Central in the hunt for their third title in a row as Hobson comes home and ties it 2-2. Two two. A pop-up by Lauren DeLong would then turn it over to McGoffin County for a chance to take the win. Morgan Wilson then hits a short but fair fly to take position at first but she's followed by three batters up and three batters down. And that will signal extra inning. With the eighth being a wash, three up and three down for both clubs. In the ninth, Allie Winlin, though, puts one to the fence for a commanding double that puts her in scoring position. And Elania Castle follows up with a near exact shot to the center fence and her double pushes Winland and the go-ahead run home. Before their bat was over, Leslie Howard took down Daniel, leaving Castle at third, and the Hornets had one last chance, down two to three in the bottom of the ninth inning. But even with two hits, it's three batters and three outs, and it's the third regional title and championship for three years in a row for the Lady Eagles of Johnson Central. We jumped out to 2-0 lead. Did you think the law of averages might be catching up with you finally? Yeah, it's hard to beat a team, team three times, especially a team like McGoffin County. They are a great team, well coached. And, you know, you, you, you look at it and you say, if Hannah don't get hurt, what happened here tonight? You know, I love that kid and I hate she wasn't here. Uh, hopefully we can represent the region uh, uh, well. but. They're a good team. My hat's tipped to them, but I'm proud of my girls. They fought and stayed in it, could have quit, and they hung in there and done what they needed to do. Have, have you allowed yourself to think about stakes this far and look ahead, or you, or you tried to stay focused on just what? I tried to stay focused on this, but I did look and see who the game would be if we was to win. And it was Madison, Madisonville, uh, North Hopkins, I think, who the team that won the second region. They were there last year. So we'll, we'll do what we can do and see what happens. <laughs> For a reason. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Does it make any better the second time? No, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Congratulations. Guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coach Pierce said the Lady Eagles will take on Madisonville North Hopkins Thursday, 5 o'clock. That is this coming Thursday at 5 o'clock. Meanwhile, at the Whitaker Bank Ballpark, the boys from Johnson Central will be in first round action on Thursday as well. Their first pitch set for 11 o'clock that morning. We wish both teams well in their endeavors this day. I'll be right back. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. A couple of big events for the weekend that we've been following here as of late. One has a backup plan weather-wise. It's not a possibility for another one, but they're already setting their sights for another big weekend a week from tomorrow. It's always good to have a plan B, especially when you have such a big event as the second annual Royalton Trail Town Festival planned for tomorrow. You were here. I hope you were here yesterday. We went through the entire list of events. It all start, starts in the morning. They've got entertainment throughout the day, all sorts of wonderful entertainers, gospel music starting at 11, and big names all the way throughout the evening, and a lot of big, big plans. A lot doesn't look like this today. This was shot yesterday. It is already starting to fill up with a whole lot of tents and vendors and more. And, of course, there's the 5K, and there's the horse ride, and then there's the other events all day long that may have to dodge a few showers and that's why we're talking about it again tonight. 1.30 there will be gospel music that will be performed by various churches in the area and then at 1.30 our bands start playing and we have five awesome bands uh, like Funkabillies from Richmond, Kentucky, Idle Times from Bressensburg, Kentucky and of course our very own Terry Miller in the bridge. So we have five different different bands, too, that are bluegrass and various music for everybody. Uh, main thing is bring a lawn chair. The admissions is $3 for everyone above age 12 years of age. And uh, we have a lot of activities for children this year. We have bluegrass bubble balls that uh, are coming, and they're going to have, like, cotton candy machine. And then we have the infl uh, inflatables. They're going to have four or five different ones of those set up. We have face painting. We have about probably... 10 activity tables, plus the great food booths that we're known for and uh, original Appalachian crafts. In addition to a lawn chair, you might want to take an umbrella. We'll give you a timeline in just a few moments as for the chance of showers. Now, they do have, of course, the 5K and the bike ride and the horse ride all set to start in the morning. And they've also got all that entertainment. And as a backup plan, I've just been confirmed that they have been granted use of South McGoffin Elementary. So the show will go on tomorrow. Might have to dodge a shower or two. We'll try to give a better timeline in just a few moments. But definitely, whether wise or not, still a big time to be had tomorrow at the second annual Royalton Festival. So last week we did a really good story on the East Kentucky Hillbilly Drag Race Championship Series, which has started. Then I was promoting their test and tune this past weekend. That's 88-year-old uh, Willard Kinzer there in his highly modified Nissan GTR. And there he is again. He might have lost the whole shot, but he didn't lose the race. This was the test and tune in the last man standing event last weekend at the Combs Airport. And this weekend, tomorrow, they were set to be at the I-64 Motorplex down in Moorhead. But weather woes tomorrow are postponing the event. So they've already postponed it. The next makeup to be announced. But the next race, I can already confirm, weather permitting, will be a week from tomorrow. And that will be race number two in the championship series. And that will be at the Pikeville Street Light track. And that is a 300-foot track right there next to the movies in the river field where they've got stadium seating for thousands that have been showing up to see this race this racing and I can't wait to see that setting and see it take place in that locale. So no racing this weekend for the Hillbilly Championship Series. They'll make up the Moorhead race later, but next week it is on to Pikeville and we'll be going on with them. 
When your allergy symptoms are persistent and nothing else has helped, call the Asthma and Allergy Center. We can help. With five locations in Eastern Kentucky, we can see you within a week. Call the Asthma and Allergy Center today at 800-852-0171 or visit aacenter.com. You won't beat the prices or find a bigger and better selection and inventory anywhere. Conley's has the tires in stock for your vehicle and your budget, plus two and four wheel alignment, oil, brake, suspension, service and repair, custom wheels and accessories, all with six months same as cash at Conley Tire in Staffordsville. Next to Foothills Telephone or 297-2424. No one deals like Parkway Gun and Pawn with a huge selection of outdoor power equipment and tools, most in near new condition at prices retailers simply cannot touch. And knives, long and handguns, fishing equipment, hand tools, jewelry, electronics, and more, a new selection and bargain every day of the week at Parkway Gun and Pawn across from Little Caesars in Sagersville, 349 Pawn. More headlines to come right now. Let's find out what's happening. Indeed, there's a lot happening on tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. One last reminder, election poll checks, well, election poll worker checks can be picked up. Same difference, I suppose. At the judge's office, they're ready to go. Come and pick them up during normal operating hours at the McGoffin County Judge Executive's office in the courthouse. And a reminder that folks who live in District 1, that's Magisterial District 1 in McGoffa County, the countywide cleanup starts in your area. It's all next week. Set your large items that you can't normally set out by the road, and the county will pick them up 8 to 3.30 daily. They'll be running. That includes washers, dryers, appliances, bulky items like furniture. Things they cannot take is construction materials such as wood, insulation, etc., and hazardous materials. You can call Solid Waste Coordinator Frankie Collett if you have any questions at 496-6179. And tomorrow is the last day of the big yard sale at the Bradley Free Will Baptist Church on Burning Fork. It will be inside. It will start at 9 o'clock in the morning, and they hope you'll stop by. Also tomorrow, the second annual Gullet Reunion in the Ramey Park at 11 o'clock in the morning. They'll be at the first shelter. All relatives and friends are invited to attend, and please bring a covered dish with you. And Vacation Bible School starts next Monday at 545, Submerged, Finding the Truth Below the Surface is the theme at Sagersville First Baptist Church. Nightly, every weeknight, next week at 545 to 8. And services will be held this Sunday at 1 in honor of 75-year-old Ellen Fletcher Patrick of Royalton, married to Ray Patrick, who survived. She's also survived by a son, Anthony, and a daughter, Deborah Bailey. Visitation will continue this evening, all day tomorrow and prior to Sunday's services. Visitation and services all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Our next headline, a portion of a special called meeting of the McGoffin County Public Library Board held Tuesday of this week where the library board met with the architect who's been working on the design for the proposed new library. The first part of the meeting made up of board members reviewing the plans that were presented and agreeing to several changes in the design. Later, discussion was concerned with the fees charged with or by the architect firm and how to stay within a budget as board chairman Brent Patrick wanted. Patrick was adamant that the architect stay within the contract agreement of $195,000 that was agreed upon by the previous board and the architectural firm. The chairman, Patrick, stated the firm had drawn down nearly $150,000 already and was now asking for an additional $183,000. These charges, the result of several changes that had been requested by both previous and current board members. And how do we talk about the same arch? That, that since we changed that here and here, leave it. Just everything, just just an arch. On this edge. Just if it were me, folks, since since we're now adding this gable element uh -huh. on the, these uh, on these pieces, mm -hmm. I'd make them match. So, I, yeah, I, I think, think so. You think that those need to now the right. one thing that Mike and I are struggling with a bit with the arch is where it's going to hit your ceiling. So we may have to kind of box around it or make a glass that you can't see through so it might be arched on the outside. But we're either going to have to raise the ceiling, which adds cost, or sort of box back behind it. Um, What's in that area make it smaller? It's your quiet study. It's the quiet study, so 
the one other nice thing is that it's centered up on here now that we only have those two. Here, um, I think it probably we could make it work here mm -hmm. with, the, with the stair. Over here in the children's area, it might have to get cut off there. or be a span drill. But so what Mike and I could do, though, just so you all know, is we could stop the low ceiling here and then step up, potentially. It's just a little more cost because we're framing a little more. But if we like that arch, we just have to figure out a way to do it for you all. So Brent, then come back to your question. Um, there have been yeah, a number of things that have changed, uh, probably since the last time Cold Dale did your asking. I think it would be appropriate to have them take a look at these changes and give you all a new number of what they think the building's going to be. Well, here's the thing. Uh, that, we get we've agreed on a budget. Every, you know, everybody needs to stick to the budget. Well, let's see. Let's see. Because this one has a bright arch and then no, switched it. Man, this so county, if you arch this, I mean, you're not going to arch it. So let's, 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 let's I mean, we agreed, we agreed on a budget. I think we need to okay. stick to it and whatever we can do, you know. I think minor changes can be done, no problem. What do you think? What did you think? This budget is just, there's no limit. Yeah, I'm saying. I think that makes sense since we're doing it on the yeah. front. If you if you that just did it on the, if you just did this on the front, it would be okay because it make that more right. special. Right. But if you're going to yeah. do it on the other side, you need to do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then that change there. Mm -hmm. And so with these and four, these are four feet. How? What is this? Eight feet. Eight feet. Yeah. Well, here's what we'll do. All right. Let, okay. Come hold on. on now. Hold on. You all have pulled down one hundred, roughly, right at one hundred fifty thousand dollars out of this escrow account. One a hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they ain't been a shovel put in the ground yet. Right. Okay. Now you're wanting to start out new. That's going to be roughly. Correct me if my math is wrong. Three hundred thirty thousand dollars of taxpayers' money that that you will receive, roughly. I'm not sure. Well, figure it up there. Uh, it, it. I mean, you you've already been paid roughly one hundred fifty thousand. So you're wanting to, according to this right here, architect's estimated fee 183. Is my math wrong? Is that roughly 330,000? I think it is. Yes. Give or take five or ten thousand, maybe. Mm -hmm. So that's what you will receive from the taxpayers of McGoffin County here. If we stick with this right here, that's correct. Let me make that clear to everybody. That's what you will be getting. Okay. I I do not agree with that. I agree with the original contract of one hundred ninety-five thousand okay. dollars. Is what I that was the original deal is my understanding. And like I said, there ain't been a shovel put in the ground, and you all pulled down almost one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I mean, they. Ain't, I mean, you you got to explain all this to me. Well, here's what we'll do, sir. Um, I think we ought to pause here. Uh, I think you all have a concern about uh, fees and budget. I think before we go any further with work, I want to get this settled with you. I will put together a package that demonstrates to you, and unfortunately I know you all are new board members, um, every step that we were requested to do, every invoice that we sent, uh, every invoice that we signed off on, and this process. So all these uh, were they, these invoices signed off on by a board member? You'll have to tell me that. No were there was no name anywhere, Melanie? Were they any board member signed these, off on these, any of this? These invoices, when they come to us, say pay. Uh, no, no, nobody on this board approved it, right? Well, I'm not sure how you could. These were before you got this county, right? But I not no. And I, the previous board. This invoice, um, October thirty first, has paid. We didn't have a board in place. Uh, my other board had resigned, and this board had not been appointed, and that yeah. one was paid. So. so they pulled down money with without a board being in place here. Who pulls that money down from you all? Um, what person does folks, that? At this point, um, since you use certain language when you went into closed session. I think it's best that we discuss these things further with each other. Um, I understand what you all are saying. I understand your concerns. I think you've had some difficult history here. Um, we'll move forward. Um, 
but I think we should do so. Um, okay. Uh, so, language. does that mean you're going to provide those changes by the end of the week, or you're not doing? I don't think that's appropriate right now because uh, I have tremendous concerns about what you're asking me to do uh, to finish the project. There's not enough for you to be consultants in my team. And I'm sorry that you all find yourselves paired in this situation, but it wasn't about me. At one point, the architect offered to step aside and let a different firm do the design, but in the end, it was agreed the firm would make those changes that the board wanted on Tuesday and that they would meet soon and hopefully work out a solution. They had set a special meeting for this coming Monday, which has since been canceled, canceled and is yet to be rescheduled. Now, time to wrap it up with your Licking Valley RECC National Weather Service, your news today forecast. It's a group effort around here. Tonight, isolated showers and thunderstorms are possible to the tune of about 10%. Those chances are just slim tonight, and you can see kind of what's going on. Nothing uh, I don't expect to the uh, tune of last night's uh, over an inch of rainfall for a lot of us. Man, it was just heavy, heavy at times. Uh, we do have some of that coming, though, I'm sad to report. Right now, I'm hopeful that they'll get most of the events in tomorrow that they have for the Royalton Festival. That's the 5K and the bike ride and, of course, the horse ride as well and a whole lot of other fun. They're going to start early tomorrow. By the afternoon, around 2 o'clock or so, I think showers, thunderstorms are going to be quite likely for a lot of us. We'll still see right around 81 degrees. Remember, they do have a backup plan for all the musical entertainment at South McGoffin Elementary. So take a lawn chair, take an umbrella, but make sure you go up. And it's going to have, They're going to have a wonderful show uh, and a wonderful day, and they hope you'll be a part of their celebration. 64 degrees with still a likelihood of showers and possibly a few thunderstorms tomorrow night and for your sunday I, it looks to be just filled with showers and maybe a thunderstorm or two and a great likelihood i don't think there'll be many outside plans accomplished on your sunday unless getting wet is one of them 75 and 58 but then a change cometh monday mostly sunny and 77 there's a 20 percent chance of some showers late monday night into early tuesday morning before 11 and it's not even gonna it's not even on your well i don't even have it on the bottom of your screen because i just didn't feel like putting it on there i think we'll dodge that and for the most part see mostly sunny skies and mostly clear skies day and night and temperatures in the mid 70s monday tuesday wednesday and then by thursday of next week the 80s and some sunshine should return That's going to put a wrap on it for this Friday. Have a good weekend. Have a dry weekend as much as possible. We'll see you back here next week for more of your news today. Thanks for watching.